Um, so a little bit about me. Uh, I'm design manager at Alex, uh, in case uh, we haven't met before. Um, I'm so happy to see a lot of uh, Alex clients and designers um, as participants of this uh, amazing event. Um, and let me be a little bit nostalgic. Uh, a year ago, just accurately one year ago, we had product meetup in Berlin um, and we had uh, speeches with uh, Sonia from Fjord. And now we have an uh, even larger event with six speakers. And that's really great to be part of, uh, of all that. Um, and today uh, I'll be talking about the connection of two major things in designers' life and in the life of a business owner, uh, actually about business and about such activity uh, as online workshops, uh, which uh, became important quite recently. Um, although they were important before, but now they are especially significant. Um, I'll start from the end. Um, if <laughs> this presentation, for some reason, um, becomes uh, too long for you, here are the quick tips um, right away. So yes, in 2020, workshops are still extremely useful for business. Everyone can learn how to do workshops and remote strategic workshops just need a lot of preparation. And that's the key difference from other workshops that you might have conducted in your life. And caution, I prepared some medieval art jokes. So probably this is something that you can experience nowadays. Suddenly everyone started talking about remote work, about workshops, meetings, and webinars, uh, Zoom, Zoom backgrounds, uh, and which uh, messenger allows better connection, Microsoft Teams or Skype or whatever. Uh, but there is something um, true um, in this trend of remote workshops. And before I start talking about strategic workshops for business, for solving business problems, I'd like to um, briefly remind you what a workshop is, uh, just in case you have never dealt with it before. So workshop uh, is an activity alternative to a meeting. While meeting is more about talking and listening, when there is some presenter who shares information with the audience and there, um, he or she sent agenda in advance and as a result of the meeting, people have action plan. The workshop is different and it's great for co-creation of things and brainstorming. And organization, also slightly different. Facilitator prepares running order, uh, meaning the very detailed plan of everything that team members will then do, um, and in not necessarily shares it with the team. And then team members do the exercises um, in the scope of the workshop, and as a result, people get some valuable artifacts, some deliverable, something that they can use right away or they make an important decision. Like, we've decided we do this thing, or we create that feature, or oh, this product is worth investment. A little bit of uh, medieval metaphors. <laughs> so if we imagine, metaphorically, of course, um, a meeting and a meeting room, there might be a lot of fighting uh, around different things. Uh, power stakeholders who have more influence in their company will be talking more, but there might be some tension uh, from middle management or people who are pretty shy and um, haven't had an opportunity to express uh, their, um, their opinion. On the other hand, a workshop is the way of unpacking or unboxing everything that, ha that is in our brain. It means that uh, the wisdom of many people present in the room at the same time is mixed together uh, and becomes uh, the basis of a solution, of something useful, something validated from different sides, from the point of view of making money and all the business matters, from the point of view of technology, and then, of course, uh, from the design standpoint. And now um, we have two main levels of workshops. Tactical workshops is probably the thing that many designers um, have tried in their career at least once. But also there are strategic workshops. Tactical workshops use um, familiar formats like customer journey mapping, um, empathy mapping, personas, um, road mapping, 
defining the scope of a product, UI functionality, um, practical, simple stuff. Strategic workshops, unlike the tactical ones, deal with abstract, high level, bird's eye view things. For example, processes, frameworks, investment decision making, and I mean not the decision making about one particular solution, but generally, how do we make investment decisions in the whole company? Also, innovation portfolio and alignment of different teams. Like we have multiple teams working in different parts of the world, and at some point we understand that they are doing the same thing differently, and company loses um, valuable effort and money on allowing different teams to do the same thing. And we understand we should align them. Uh, who participates in the workshops? Um, for technical workshops, uh, usually it's a product team. Business analyst, designer, QA, um, product manager, whoever. Uh, those guys who work on a product, maybe a service. Uh, let's maybe use more general word solution because solution includes both of them. Um, also users and client representatives can become part of workshop if you invite them. Um, like you have a trusted client um, who can contribute uh, to, to the workshop, then why not? He can come and work with the, the rest of the team and subject matter experts. When we are talking about strategic workshops, then um, we deal with executives, top and middle management and strategic clients, meaning that the same executives, top and middle management will come from their side, not just ordinary specialists. And that's the reason of the following. Usual duration of a tactical workshop can be different. Starting from even half an hour, it's written here one hour, but it can be half an hour to eternity, the month of workshopping, two weeks of workshopping, a week of workshops. Executives and top management cannot allow themselves to devote such a huge period of time just workshopping because they have other tasks to do. That's why we can only um, be sure about two, three hours maximum. And another metaphor, just to visualize what I'm talking about, because these are pretty abstract things. So if we imagine that product level is this cute O, then the business process level, strategic level, is the pond with all those people and fantastic creatures running around and the lake in the middle and everything that happens in some order. And this is the level of the whole business. And you can compare how small is the cute product level, this O, sitting in a magical tree, and the business process level involving multiple teams. And that puts a lot of responsibility on the facilitator. Usually, designers play the role of facilitators. At least uh, at Alex, we practice that because designers possess uh, the skill of um, ordering, um, structuring team collaboration. Uh, but when we are talking about strategic workshops, there, there are three difficult things about that, unlike tactical workshops or any other activity. Um, first of all, uh, these workshops, um, not only nowadays, but a year ago and uh, two years ago, they could be organized primarily online. The reason? Because teams uh, at the large scale are distributed. And if we are talking not about a tiny, a startup team located in um, one city, or probably they are working in the same garage, uh, but about large corporation uh, represented globally, then there might be a case when CTO is in the US, um, chief digital officer is in Canada, director of innovation, let's say in China, chief financial officer in South Africa, and your team is somewhere in Europe then the only way to um, team up is online. Of course, there is such, uh, such a thing, such an obstacle as uh, different time zones, but you can agree that it's much easier to um, sacrifice your evening with the family and join uh, the workshop online instead of flying and losing one day or maybe two days with jet lag, flying to the location where everyone can collaborate offline. And that's why it was widely spread even before uh, COVID-19 crisis and the upcoming uh, economic crisis. So that's not a new thing. 
uh, the second difficulty about strategic workshops, about workshops for business, um, they require custom workshop formats. You cannot just take uh, the customer journey mapping uh, exercise from a book and satisfy everyone. Because on the higher level, the decisions are out of, uh, they, they are beyond the particular product and they concern maybe the whole line of products or uh, the general market trends and how the company should feed them. And that's why um, user personas, empathy mapping, customer journey mapping might not work on the higher level. I mean the C-level and top management level. That's why designer or whoever is a facilitator should um, employ slightly different approach here. And the third difficult thing is that it can't be simply extended ad hoc if you haven't finished yet. Um, in my practice uh, from the projects when we focused on just one particular product, maybe family of products, uh, the usual thing is like, um, guys, do you need to have a hard stop uh, in 20 minutes? Oh no, okay, then let's continue. And we are workshopping for an hour, maybe two hours more. In this case, uh, we are time bound really strictly and it won't be possible to have five, 15, 20 minutes more, even one minute more. And probably some of the stakeholders will have such a tight, uh, tight schedule that they might want to leave you even earlier than scheduled. And there are three deadly scenes of strategic workshops. First of all, is leaving people alone for a long time. And I wouldn't say that it, it's a specific deadly scene of a strategic workshop. That's a deadly scene of any workshop. Um, the trouble is that when people stay alone for more than 20 minutes, they start distracting. And there is this psychological effect. I cannot recall the exact name, but you know when the, the work occupies uh, the whole time devoted for it. I mean, you can compose a presentation like I am showing uh, you right now for two hours, but it can take the whole week if you have this week. The same story here, 20 minutes is more than enough for a simple exercise and then you need to team up again to gather people together again and give them a different exercise or maybe review the results or whatever. Actually, even two jokes are coded here and probably the ones uh, um, who know the film Godfather can recognize the quotation uh, in white font. That happens when you leave people alone, especially uh, people with strong opinions. And usually um, top managers and executives tend to have a strong opinion. Otherwise, they wouldn't have been in their position. The second deadly scene, remaking stuff you already have. There is no need to ask a person about information that you already gathered, for example, from your users. You'd better share it with them, but there is no need to recreate it again. And in the workshops that I've conducted recently, um, my team, and um, including people from the client side, they are extremely awesome and lovely people. Uh, we prepared a lot of stuff beforehand. We type this uh, stuff in advance just to avoid retyping it during the workshop. People just need to move the things around. That's enough. And the third deadly scene of a strategic workshop, irrelevant level of abstraction. If a facilitator, and often it's a designer, tries to enlighten uh, people in the room about um, usability, I'm not talking that usability is not important. And um, <laughs> of course, I'm not talking that users are not important, but um, maybe C-level is not the most uh, relevant company for evangelizing usability. Uh, it's your job if you are a designer and when you are facilitating something with the top management, please talk top management language and let's decide something that you cannot decide without them. But good news is that you can overcome all these hurdles. And preparation is king. On this slide, you can see an example of the workshop agenda from one of the clients. And don't be surprised to see the slightly blurred images ahead because uh, I need to keep the commercial secrets. This project is still ongoing. 
Um, and I'll show you just the overall structure and I'll explain the things so that you can understand what it means. Um, on this particular slide, you see the agenda minute by minute. Uh, and actually it was a really successful workshop which we conducted even twice. But it um, wouldn't have been that successful if we had had just this agenda and that's it. And now I'll tell you about what's needed more. So just having a workshop plan is not enough. Here, there are at least five points that you should also check. And let's play a game. Uh, in your next workshop, take this checklist and one check mark means one point. And the minimal uh, number of points to pass is five. Uh, so first of all, participants should be um, thoroughly selected and incentivized. It means that you have approximately four, eight primary stakeholders and stunt doubles. Because if you are missing someone in the workshop, then everything breaks apart. Uh, like if you invited two people, uh, or four people, and for the exercise, you need exactly four people, like two pairs of, uh, uh, of, of the participants, but instead you have three, then the workshop won't be possible or you should, should change the exercises on the fly, which is not possible again. And it's a lot of mess uh, and, and then you will be nervous um, and won't achieve the result. That's why it's important to have stunt doubles, people who have uh, pretty the same power of decision-making and pretty the same expertise, and then can, they can um, participate in the workshop instead of uh, their colleagues who cannot join. Besides that, participants should understand their benefit. Usually, on such a high level as top management and executive level, people are motivated non-materially. It means that they become part of uh, some new technology uh, and have access to trendy things or they see um, the branding benefit of their department, or um, they want to be part of uh, this decision. Or maybe in the future, in the long term, they want to be promoted or have bonds. And, and one more important thing about power stakeholders who are not presented, um, who are not present on the workshop. That might be a trouble because afterwards, when you prepare the workshop um, outcomes, send it out to participants, the stakeholder can come and say, okay, you know, um, I don't agree. And you have uh, nothing to say against it because this person was not present in the workshop and didn't witness how those ideas emerged. What was the root cause? What was the reason of those valuable ideas? But only you know that they are valuable. The second thing, uh, invitations uh, and scheduling. Um, writing invitations is kind of art, I would say, because uh, they should clearly state the workshop goal, timing, introductory information, and all participants should, of course, obviously accept those invitations or at least agree uh, differently um, in a phone call or um, writing personal email to the organizer. Dry run of the program. Probably this one is the core of preparation and consequently it's a great workshop. And what we do on our projects, we gather a team of two, four trusted experts. And if we are talking about clients, then uh, we take the immediate client team. Uh, I mean, those uh, who we work with every day and dry run the workshop program with them. And this is the most exciting and insightful thing ever um, during workshopping because you can detect uh, all the troubles, uh, everything which is not logical in your program. Um, for example, um, you plan to exercise it um, together one by one, but the output from this uh, exercise can be the input for uh, the second exercise. It's, um, it's not fitting the format or you should predict that and ask people in the first exercise to write their ideas in a certain uh, formulation so that they can be used in the second exercise and, and so on. Uh, oh, and of course, one more thing about timing, because you'll see the real timing only in the dry run. And then digital workspace access and setup. Um, the trouble with digital workshopping is that not everyone uh, can handle the digital tool. 
if we're talking about offline format, everything is easy. We know how to <laughs> write something on post-its. Maybe some people do not know how to build post-its correctly so that they do not scroll afterwards. I mean, they do not do that and then fall uh, down on the floor. But that's an easy thing. Uh, in the digital world, uh, with all these remote collaboration tools, uh, you might be uh, accustomed to one tool, but uh, participants work in different tools and they have never dealt with, let's say, uh, Miro or Whimsical or Mural, uh, whatever. And you need to prepare them ahead and make sure that they logged in and try doing something in this tool. And that's why there won't be trouble and no one will, will steal your facilitator's time in the workshop. Um, and here is an example of what we um, did uh, quite a while ago in one of the workshops. You can notice that everything is prepared beforehand. The post-its are empty, but they are here. And that's why participants, not of, all of them are technical savvy. And when they uh, log in into this uh, workspace, they see their names above their uh, spaces and they know where they can contribute information. And also there are individual instructions above. I can show you here, zoomed in a little bit. You see instructions, like put the information like that. It should typically start from the following words or like there. And I'm already controlling the amount of information that I need from people. Because uh, if they are free to put as many notes as needed, uh, there might be a mess. But this one sets the exact amount of information which will be effective for the next phase. Let's go further. Another screenshot, this tool is uh, called Whimsical, by the way. And I personally um, enjoy it more than uh, Miro, um, formerly a real-time board. The reason is that Whimsical uh, has more cute deliverables. They are more presentation ready. And when you take a screenshot or export information from Whimsical, you can insert it directly into the slide and it looks good. And you shouldn't spend your time trying to align all the stuff so it's um, logical and presentable afterwards. Uh, this is one more thing. Uh, it was a workshop for uh, top managers, people who are leading their teams and um, have even sub teams. But instead of making them write all the information from scratch, we uh, decided to prepare it in advance um, and let them just sort the things. That was extremely effective. And by the way, we were even, even though we were lacking time on, in the workshop and had to skip some of the unnecessary activities. And that's another tip for you. You can deliberately insert some activities, some small activities into the workshop that you can easily sacrifice if you see that you are lacking time. And the fifth uh, recommendation from me for you today is team awareness of how the tool works. So the first one was uh, digital workspace setup everything is ready and now um, that you have also plan B. For example, if something is not working, we had a case when this digital online collaboration workspace didn't work uh, for one of the participants. Uh, she couldn't post any uh, note there. That's why we decided to allow her uh, send it directly to me and then I put it uh, for her. And that's another tip for you uh, that when a facilitator is also a participant, it's not good because then you don't have an opportunity to support other participants in trouble. That's why it's recommended to be just a facilitator and do not take part in all the activities. That's an example of the slides that we prepared uh, for one of the strategic workshops with multiple teams involved. Um, it shows in detail um, how the offline format uh, that some of the participants uh, are familiar with turned into this digital format. And also some of the recommendations what people should try doing in the tool and some tips and tricks. And thanks to our, owing to our dry run, we figured out that it's hard for people, especially not using, using uh, iMacs and MacBooks without trackpads, but with their mouses on the right side uh, in their hands, it's hard to scale and to distinguish between scaling, between zooming in, zooming out and moving the board itself. They um, confuse those two actions. And that's why we put it here in this instruction. And in the workshop, we had no troubles with that. Mm, let's zoom in version for you so you can see 
some of the instructions here in plain English, pretty simple with screenshots. This is what you can see. Uh, click here, try doing some stuff there. Don't touch those boards. And now, okay, you have this, I suppose, and I hope um, new knowledge and new tips and tricks today. Uh, how can you use it for strategizing in your team? How about um, trying to brainstorm on a preparation for the COVID and economic crisis? Or maybe you want to, to make investment decisions easier mm -hmm. and you can help to build this mechanism from scratch, something custom for your company. Or maybe you have multiple teams doing the same thing or have overlapping functions and you want to align them. Then strategic workshops with custom exercises can help you. Like we did recently, pain points and needs of the three key audiences. Again, it's blurred. You cannot see the text because it's commercial uh, secret, but you can generally understand what we did. In our workshop, uh, we generated pain points and needs of um, our internal company's audience, I mean the client's company's audience, uh, of uh, the clients of our clients, and also internally of the team who, that was workshopping. And then we united that into clusters and in the next step, we attached relevant solutions to the clusters of needs and pain points, grouped by topic. And as a result, we had clarity about what to do next. Here that is, this the longest list. We are the most prepared for that one and where we have uh, fewer stickers, um, fewer cards, it means that uh, this is area for improvement for us. We can create more solutions, especially if the number of relevant needs and pain points is substantial. One more useful thing, we have a great experience of building processes from scratch. Like if some expertise is absent in your company. Uh, I know from my experience that many product companies started as development startups. A couple of developers, um, enthusiastic guys gathered together, uh, started business, um, and then they have never had experience with design expertise. That's normal, but they have a working product already. Maybe it needs some improvements. And at this point, they need to build design expertise from scratch in their company. And this expertise should be on the verge uh, between best practices, the world best practices, and the peculiarities of their business. And that's also possible to build in a strategic workshop or create uh, the design process like this one. Uh, and we had even three versions for it. Um, the basic one for communicating with people who are not familiar with the design, research, user experience, all that stuff. Generally for their understanding what we're doing. Then we had simplified version for those who will participate by as secondary um, participants, like, like uh, guest experts. And the third version was for us, for our team, because we were implementing all that stuff. So to sum up, because I see that I'm short on time. Um, workshops really facilitate the creation and development of business processes and uh, workshops are a great tool. Um, not golden bullet, uh, you shouldn't use workshops everywhere where you can, but for business, it's a relevant uh, framework. And a second of advertising, <laughs> uh, recently um, at Alex we uh, prepared a practical article illustrated by our recent case studies about uh, remote workshopping. And also there is an illustrated um, guide with five uh, handy tips uh, included as a free material into this article. And also we uh, have a separate landing page about uh, our design offerings and case studies and my humble design blog. Thank you for your attention.